Uh, we are back uh, with our interview uh, where we are talking to uh, Amani and Leila about their experiences uh, moving to Germany and uh, applying for jobs here. Uh, now we would mainly focus on the job search in itself. So um, Leila, could we start from you? Could you tell us how was your experience uh, applying for jobs in Germany? Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, Elenia. Yeah, it was, uh, to say, very different in the different stages uh, that uh, I was uh, in Germany from the beginning till I found the first job till uh, then I went on maternity leave for a long period and then I came back uh, uh, and um, moved uh, jobs within the same company. Um, but I have to say that uh, with persistence and with dedication, um, I found uh, the right job uh, for myself. And now I feel that I'm really not regretful of uh, every single job interview, every single uh, experience that I had that failed, uh, because uh, there are a lot of uh, failed attempts in the beginning, uh, especially when you are moving uh, from Syria or Lebanon or any other country in the world to Germany. Everything is different. It's not to say that um, the market and the country is not accepting diversity. It's just, it's a different uh, um, uh, industry in general. It's a different uh, skill set that is required than what we typically see in our countries. Um, the way you are writing your CV, um, the way you are uh, doing interviews, everything is really new which uh, makes uh, the possibility and probability to get uh, an interview even in the beginning harder. Um, and then to get the final uh, offer and success um, also slightly harder. Um, but if you do the right research, and uh, I would say you, you don't need to uh, pay a lot of comp uh, money to special companies or to consultants to do that. You just learn by uh, doing and by failing, honestly. Uh, and this is how it happened with me. So I was in Germany, as I mentioned before, uh, since I got a family reunion visa, I had the chance, the privileged chance to uh, uh, be there with my husband for some time while I was uh, uh, looking. So I have to say I wasn't in a rush. So I had a place to stay and uh, I had the time also to learn German while uh, applying. So I wasn't really uh, desperate to kind of start immediately. And at the same time, it was hard. Uh, so even if you're in Germany, it's not like a magical world because you have, a, uh, you have an address there on your CV that you find a job immediately. At the beginning, I was uh, applying to... Uh, the sector that I was working in before in Lebanon. Um, and uh, with uh, more than one interview, uh, I found that um, they uh, would, uh, for example, in this sector would uh, require a bit more German skills because it's about writing reports and economics and um, being more fluent uh, in German. And that's why I had a a slight deviation in where I was looking. I was starting to look in industries and startups or uh, like analytics jobs where um, being numerical and analytical is more important than knowing the language. And there are many English-based companies anyway uh, in these areas. And this is where I saw a, a significant difference in the number of uh, applications and interviews that I got. And then I got confident that, okay, now I did the right decision to move slightly the industry. Um, and this took like two or three months to realize. Um, and then uh, in the first few interviews where I did well, but I would say I, I wasn't very uh, confident uh, in the interview. So uh, I realized that I should prepare more my kind of soft skills rather than um, typically, of course, uh, researching the company, understanding what the company is doing, looking at the details, uh, preparing um, some of hypothetical case studies that might come up. But it's more about like the soft skills, the way you present yourself, the way you um, answer challenging questions uh, is important. 
And um, and this also, I have to say, it, it's not a magical portion that you find on on the internet, like how to present yourself or uh, um, interview uh, uh, tips. Of course, it's good to read these, but the most I learned was to fail at them. Um, and then finally, uh, in the final stage of a few uh, job applications, after six months, I got uh, two offers and uh, I uh, went for one in the company where I am now. And uh, I highlight again that it was challenging, um, but I learned a lot in this six months. And once you're in and once you're like in the process confidently, you would see really positive results. Um, one tip here is that you kind of need to record uh, what is happening in this state, like build a journal and uh, write down uh, that in this uh, week, I have applied to uh, 10 jobs and I get one interview. If the, if the, um, if the initial phase of screening of the CVs, if you're not getting interviews, then you need to reconsider your CV and cover letter. But if you're getting a lot of interviews, but not going to the final stages, then you need to practice more on your interview skills. And um, with that, you need to, of course, record how many uh, applications you did and how many interviews uh, you got. And there will be some disappointing experiences where you spend a lot of energy researching the companies and, and doing the first and second interview, but then you don't get the job. But once you reach the final stages, it means that you have it all. You have the, the right background, you have the uh, CV, but it wasn't um, the right job for you because someone else did take the job. And the second tip I would uh, advise is not to overthink why you didn't get the uh, job because this will get you nowhere. Of course, you need to analyze, as I mentioned, like put a journal and analyze, like kind of do some statistics uh, uh, for your application because it will take some time. Um, but don't overthink why the last job did not work. Just move on and go to the next one. So take the learning positively and go to the next one. And the third tip is uh, work on the quality of your applications rather than quantity. I know that many people like me had limited time to apply. You don't have like eight hours a day to look at jobs. You have your families, you have your current jobs uh, in uh, Lebanon or in Syria, and you have only some dedicated time um, to apply on weekends or in the afternoons. So that's why you need to think of how many applications um, you're uh, giving in quality, like the cover letter should be written uh, in the right way, uh, no spelling mistakes for sure. There are big no's and uh, definitely don't work with a, like a generic way of just writing one CV for all companies, one cover letter for all companies. This is very, very clear and evident for the recruiter. It's easy to spot a cover letter that is not written uh, for the company itself. Um, and in the CV, of course, you don't change your CV completely, but you highlight the areas that you'd like to highlight for this uh, specific company. Um, because we bear in mind that recruiters have very little time to screen a big number of CVs. And they need to see the, the bold parts of your CV that they are looking for. So just make it visible for them uh, in the CV. And for that, rather than applying for uh, 50 open positions uh, in one month, uh, choose the 10 that you really see there's a big chance and you see yourself fit and you see yourself working in this company and, um, and create the very good quality uh, application for them. Oh, wow, amazing team. That was too long. <laughs> No, it, it's great. It's amazing. And I absolutely agree with all of those. Amazing. Very helpful. Um, I, yeah, from my experience, listen to, to people who live abroad and are applying for jobs here. I, I can see that not everybody knows uh, the things you mentioned. So thank you very much for, for highlighting those points. Very relevant indeed. Great. 
<laughs> Mani, your experience uh, was very different from Leila's. Um, you applied for jobs while staying in, in Syria, right? And you applied in the IT field. So tell us, how was for you applying for jobs while living outside Germany? I mean, as a general tip, I think it's similar to what Leila mentioned, because it's all about commitment and uh, uh, spending time for the interviews and not only for the interviews because you have to prepare something before as as Leila mentioned you have to improve your cv and you have to improve your linkedin profile um yes it's it's different when it's in like outside of europe but in in general it's the same process you have to improve your cv to match to match the company or like the the location of the company that you're applying for um, so the template, for example, for the CV in Europe, it's different than the template for the, for the CV in, uh, in Syria, for example, and I would say it's the same for Lebanon. So you just have to make sure that your CV uh, template matches the Europe template, and that's simple. You can find a lot of examples on the internet, so you don't have to, it, it's not a complex process. Um, and then uh, what is important, as also Leila mentioned, is the content of the CV itself. So it's really important to, um, for me, it's two things. The first thing is the position itself. Um, so in, in general, uh, in, in uh, Syria, for example, the, the position or the title of the, of the position might be different than the, the, the position in Europe, but we have to make sure that when we put the title, it's not necessarily the same as you had, but it's the one that matched the one in Europe. Otherwise, you might not get interviews. And this is what happened to me. So I had the first version of the, of the CV with a lot of different uh, title. It's the same. So it's software engineer, but one of them full stack, one of them web developer, one of them software engineer. And then I, I realized that this is not a good uh, experience it's better to have them like with the same so that they know that you gain experience on each one and you're like uh, increasing the experience as well so it's not like you're switching um, because for them each one of them is a different role like uh, if you're a web developer it's more like in website things if you're a software engineer you can do everything so these kind of things um, so this is the first part the second part is the the responsibility so it's important to mention responsibility in each work experience along with the technology that you use there. Uh, because if you didn't send, like mention any responsibility there, there, it's not clear what you did. So software engineer in one company is not exactly the same as software engineer in another company. Also, they want more understanding about your background. Uh, are you a back-end person? Are you a front-end person? Or you can do both. And if you, even if you are a backend person, because mostly I'm a backend person, um, are you involved more in the requirement part or also in the architecture part of the, of the software in general or the system design? Like there's a lot of different responsibility. So it's really important to mention all these different items on, on the CV as well. Um, one, another tip that it's really important, a lot of people work on the CV, but they forgot to work on the LinkedIn while it's the, the first point to touch if you're applying on LinkedIn. So when, when you apply on LinkedIn, the first thing that they see is the LinkedIn profile, and then they ask you, ask you for the CV. So if your LinkedIn is not good, they might, you might not be, like they might not get back to you at all. Uh, so you have to work not only on the CV, but also on the LinkedIn and try to make it, I mean, it's not that you have to be exactly the same as the CV, but at least, um, it, you are the same person so it's not that one one person on linkedin and another in and on um, on uh, a linkedin so i found a lot of examples for example from friends or uh, people who i worked with they have different titles for example on cv and they are not exactly the same on linkedin so that means uh, so now we're recruiters could be confused which part is the truth like the true part um yeah so this is the first part. So for me, I, I worked, uh, uh, I make a research on the template of the CV. I changed my CV. I get some advices of my friends on the, on the template of the CV. So they also helped me with that. Um, and then I start applying. Uh, when you apply, you have to realize also, this is a very important tip. You, if you wanna apply for a company that you really like, maybe, maybe you don't have to apply it first because most likely the first interview you will fail or maybe even the second. I mean, I'm not saying the first interview with the same company, like two companies. So you might fail the first company, you might fail also the second company. 
Uh, and then, of course, as Leila mentioned, this is a learning process. So you will learn from each interview with each company, and then improve on the on the on the other other uh, uh, interviews with other companies. This is exactly also what happened to me. So I didn't I didn't I didn't. Uh, the first interview was not successful, for example, with the first company, but I learned a lot from it. So um, I learned what they are looking for in terms of also technology part. So like um, they are looking for concepts more than only the technology. Uh, so you have to pr to prepare to be to explain concept not only that you're for example experience with uh, specific programming languages is mostly the important because you're a software engineer so the most important part is the concept of the engineering in general so if you um, and this is something for example in syria uh, we don't care about at least in some companies not all we don't care about the concepts itself we, they care about the solution so we apply the concept but we, we don't know that this is the concept, so at least we have to read about it. I also did that, um, so I learned all these different things. Um, I already applied applied those things in previous job, but I just didn't know the name of it, so I had to learn the name uh, of this. Of course, that's that comes from the interview because sometimes they ask you about something, and then when you read about it, you learn that uh, you just realize that you already know this, but you just didn't know that it is this part. So this is also something um, I. Uh, it was also very helpful for me from previous interviews. Um, and then, yeah, uh, after I think maybe two or three companies, I, uh, I get the, the job contract and uh, yeah, starting the visa process as we mentioned in the previous uh, video. Awesome, great. Um... One very common question that I very often hear is regarding the technologies. Um, you mentioned that you are more a backend person. Uh, so could you tell us in terms of backend technologies, backend languages, um, in your opinion, your point of view, uh, what are the most popular languages in Germany? I mean, uh, this is this is always a question that I got, but I always answer in a way like everything is on demand. Of course, except the very very old programming languages because it's not used anymore. Um, but most likely, everything is on, on on demand. I would say like in in general, you have uh, Java, Kotlin, PHP, Python, Ruby on Rail, C Sharp, even C plus plus. This is a little bit old, but it's still used. Um, so all these different uh, technology are used. Uh, is still used here and if you search for specific language you will find a lot of different jobs for each one of them the same even apply for the front end i mean maybe for the front end it's a little bit like more like they are looking for more uh, modern technology than than but i would say even for front end everywhere they started using this technology so like react angular uh, vue.js and, and all like these different technologies but in general, I always advise people, you have to go for, with the technology that you prefer and you have experience with. Uh, because if you want to switch, it's harder to get a job because there are specific, I mean, not all companies, again, specific companies, they look for engineers with the specific years of experience in specific technology. So, for example, if you are experienced in PHP, it's better to apply for jobs that are related to, to PHP development, not for other languages, because the chances that you get interviews there are higher than other, other companies that, for example, they are working with Java. It's, it's not the same technology. That doesn't mean that they also won't get a job, because some companies don't, don't care about the technology. They care about the way that you think and solve problems. Um, so this is, uh, this is something I always advise people. So it's all about what you like and what you have experience with. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Great, thank you. So um, Leila and Amani, um, do you have anything to add? Um, any advice you would, give, you would like to give people thinking of moving to Germany? Uh, I always just say that uh, never give up. So it's all about uh, trial and uh, and uh, like try and, and fail and succeed. So as Leila mentioned, and I also mentioned that it's not always that you have to uh, succeed in the first interview or even the second. Uh, you just have to keep trying until you, you get what you want. So it's all about commitment, as I mentioned in the beginning. If you keep trying, you will eventually get, get the job that you want. 
also my advice is to uh, just look at the end goal uh, for yourself and, and make sure to understand that uh, you're capable of uh, doing that. Uh, it's not only the success story of uh, us two here. Uh, I know many uh, friends uh, also here uh, at see many people um, uh, applying and uh, getting jobs uh, in the company I am in who are uh, coming from uh, Lebanon and uh, Syria and um, are successful in getting the visa application and in getting uh, jobs in uh, Germany. So there are many, many who have success stories as well, but maybe uh, not sharing this uh, on social media. Um, but uh, yeah, we um, are um, living in a world right now where it's uh, um, harder to get a job. Uh, it takes more time and it takes more dedication for everyone. And this is what I highlighted that if you're not uh, currently living and residing in Germany, does it mean that um, you can get a job in Germany? Um, and this is where the success stories we have uh, heard and just be positive and it will happen in the end. Amazing. Great, thank you very much. Um, all those tips were very, uh, very precious. I'm sure that many people will benefit from those tips. And uh, also I'm sure that many people will get inspired by you, by, by the two of you. Uh, well, um, you mentioned that it's important to prepare for the interviews. It's important to tailor your CV, your LinkedIn profile, also your cover letter. So I would like to mention Imagine. Um, Imagine offers a digital bootcamp to help people exactly with those um, aspects of job, job search. Uh, we have a three steps program that uh, will teach you uh, how to prepare your CV, your LinkedIn profile, uh, also will give you feedback on your skills uh, and some additional tips specifically for you, for your case, on how you can um, find and apply for jobs in Germany. Uh, it's all for free. Uh, we mainly work on um, the IT field because well, we, we need to specialize in some fields, so we choose the IT field where you can find a lot of opportunities here in Germany, especially in Berlin. So if you are a software engineer, if you are interested in finding a job, on-site job in Germany, feel free to apply to join us. Uh, you simply can go to our website, joinimagine.com, and then apply for our bootcamp. We'll be very happy to support you. Uh, at the end of the program, we will receive um, a 360 degree feedback and also access to our resources, articles and videos to help you prepare not only your application, but also to prepare for your interviews. So thank you very much, Eleni, Amani and Leila for being here with us, for sharing your insights, your experiences with, with us. I'm sure that many people will be happy to hear and to learn from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.